Look, I know I was late to the party playing Control, but by God is it not for a lack of trying. I quit and came back to this game three times before I finally finished it. Me and Control are like a toxic junior high relationship. But what's not to love here? I mean, at face value we've got paranormally possessed zombie people, check. Superpowers that are a cross between Star Wars Jedi and the Edgelord from Chronicle, check. Courtney Hope, check. check. All great stuff, right? So why'd it take me three times of trying to play it to finish it? Well, let's get into it. But first, today's sponsor is FlexiSpot Standing Desks. Tired of your feet looking like burnt cauliflower because you've been sitting in a chair fighting interdimensional zombies all day? Well, FlexiSpot Standing Desks give you a way to get up on your feet without having to take a break. You can keep gaming, working, or you know, watching your favorite YouTuber. The possibilities are endless. The L-shaped desk that FlexiSpot sent me supports up to 177 pounds, and actually raising it is as painless as it gets. The dual motors keep it quiet when it's actually in motion, and they work together at the same speed, keeping your desk stable even while you're adjusting the height. And when I'm ready to plop back down like the fat sack of garbage I am, all I've got to do is press a button on the simple-to-use multifunctional panel that includes the ability to set height presets and use its nifty little charging port for other devices. This FlexiSpot desk has a special L shape, so it's got more space for multiple devices on the desktop. This desk is the reason I now have room to use this shock mount. It's not going to be like that Baldur's Gate 3 video anymore, where I clearly didn't have room to use one, but I tried to anyway. That's horrible. And the L shape gives me room right here to rest my elbow when I'm talking to you guys, so... Not bad. And they've got bigger ones too. Look, I'm not a desk channel, I'm not an expert on desks, so don't just take my word for it. Go check out their customer reviews for yourself. And if you like what you see, come back to this video and then use the link in the description to upgrade your setup. And you'll be helping out this channel at the same time. I will receive a kickback if anybody purchases that way. So thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Go check out their standing desks. So, back to it. I first tried Control back when it first came out, and leading up to its release, you could chalk my excitement up to just kind of... meh. Now, I have an irrational love for the first Alan Wake game, it is true, but I'd also played Remedy's next title, Quantum Break, and to me, Control looked way less like subpar shooter with a story to make up for it, and more like a gimmicky shooter that makes me question why I finished it. So when Control did come out, and I finally got my greasy mittens on it, right away I was... intrigued? I mean, right off the bat, you're in a spooky, way too quiet government building, with nothing but Jesse Faden's character model and Ati the janitor to keep you company. That actually sounds fantastic now that I say it out loud. Minus the government part. Jokes aside, the intro to Control really did have me hooked. You're looking for Jesse's missing brother, who was taken by the Federal Bureau of Control 17 years earlier. Think of the Bureau as Remedy Vs. version of the Men in Black or the X-Files, but dealing with paranormal events. Mostly SCP-type objects that make horrible and sometimes hilarious things happen around them. The Furnace is alive? How you doing, Furnace? Can I jump in you? Oh! A singing fish on a wall. It flies around at night and sings devil songs? That's awful. An evil singing fish is hilarious, though. Maybe it sings, like, a bunch of racially insensitive songs. Yeah, how do you work in a place like this? A trash can could accidentally be an eldritch being that consumes souls. At the Bureau's headquarter building, called The Oldest House, Jesse, the slasher villain Faden, is here to get some answers. You get smacked with layers of mystery before the gameplay has even started yet. Apparently, people walk by this building every day and no one seems to notice it. Jesse herself wouldn't have found this massive building that's sitting in plain sight if not for the voice in her head that told her where to go. You called me. So here I am. Yes, Jesse has a uh, voice in her head. After the incident 17 years ago in which everyone in her hometown went missing and her brother got snatched by the Bureau, Jessie developed a little voice in her head that talks to her from time to time. Did she recognize that a voice in her head is very dangerous and make every attempt to get rid of it? Nope. She named it Polaris and speaks with it regularly. Anywho, stepping into the Bureau's HQ, you notice there's nobody around, you find a note warning people not to bring any kind of small objects inside, rubber ducks and ketchup bottles, and it's suspiciously quiet. 
I guess 17 years of looking for this place, I could see how Jesse might be let down by the complete lack of a welcome party. At least she jumps kind of funny though. After a conversation with the strange yet alluring janitor Ati, You are here about the job. Janitor's assistant. You'll work for me. You can say I sent you. I am actually president of the company. Where it implies he can hear Jesse's thoughts, and what used to be his painting on the wall is now an elevator, you find the big man, the head honcho. The big cheese. The director of the bureau himself, Zachariah Trench. He has decided to take a nap, so Polaris and Jesse take the opportunity to just snatch his piece and are immediately transported to an astral plane, where the disembodied voice of the board clues us in that this is sort of an audition. Get chosen? You're the new director. Didn't want the job? That's too damn bad! Lose and, well, you wearing concrete shoes at the bottom of the lake if you know what I mean. Jessie survives, is chosen as the new director, and before she can even find an assistant to allegedly threaten with their life, the action starts. Stepping out of the office as new director, we're hit with our very first complaints from workers disgruntled about their PTO getting denied. Just kidding, they're possessed. Possessed by a paranormal entity that Jessie nicknames on the spot, the hissing sound that tried to invade me earlier. The hiss. Jesse, you're coming off like a CW side character with all these nicknames. Just just this once, it's okay to just call them bad guys or something. It tries to possess Jesse, but Polaris apparently stops that from happening. How does Polaris do this? It's a mystery. In this opening, the sort of 80s office art style is superb. The buildup is tense. The bodies floating in the air chanting are so creepy they rival the automatons. Are they alive? Oops. Not anymore. Fun fact, no matter what language you have on in the game, these bodies will chant in accordance with whatever region you're playing the game in. You can't fool Sam Lake. He knows where you are. All this made me go, okay, you know, maybe there is some horror baked in here. Maybe there's a little bit more Alan Wake flavor in this remedy pie than I thought, and I was into it. But the intro is where that stops. Control's a horror game, all right. For Jesse's enemies, Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger wish they could stack a pile of bodies with as much nonchalance as Jesse Faden. With new weapons and powers that Jesse gets along the way, she basically kicks the door in everywhere she goes and just starts blasting like it's another Tuesday. Jesse is completely unfazed by all of this. The game's like, here Jesse, here's a horrifying eldritch being that eats people inside of a refrigerator, and Jesse's just like, alright cool, so how do I kill it? We've got an object of power loose in there. <laughs> it's wrecking the place. The Benikoff TV? I'll handle it. So I had the wrong expectations going in, and because of that, I stopped playing after realizing the game had way more emphasis on the combat and powers than really any kind of tension or scares. And that's not the game's fault, it wasn't trying to be a horror game. Despite the intriguing opening, I just wasn't feeling the arcadey action game that it wanted to be. Control fell out of my mind faster than the math symbols did in that kid's ear in that one commercial about summer school or something. So my first attempt to play Control ended about an hour and a half, two hours in. Attempt number two happened about a year and a half later in 2020, when Control slithered its way onto Game Pass. And I had Game Pass, so I figured, sure, I'll give it a second shot. Everyone seems to be raving about it online, and now I have a better idea of what I'm getting into this time. Less spooky, more shooty. Oh, and I hear it crosses over with Alan Wake and its DLC. I mean, how am I supposed to resist that? I played through the intro the second time. I'm blasting the hiss again. I'm using the force to pick up objects with that sweet, sweet sound effect. Oh. Oh. And all is right in the world. But once I got farther than I did the first time, around the three or four hour mark, something happens in Control that continues almost all the way to the ending. You are hit with world building after world building after world building, which is awesome. The problem though is that the actual story, like the narrative, barely goes anywhere for most of this game. You spend so much of this game doing what feels like menial tasks, like unclog the Taco Bell demon out of this drain here, or restore power to this thing over here that's actually the sarcophagus of a previous director. Like the lore in those tasks and others makes you go, wait, 
excuse me? That's interesting. But the actions themselves felt so run of the mill for me. This is really random. Why am I burning stuff in a furnace? Janitor's assistant, the game. This is what we came here to do. Turn on power and unlock pipes. And the map navigation, good God. Forget the hiss or the objects of power, the map is the main enemy of this game. At first I thought, you know, maybe I'm just an idiot and I don't deserve my own sentience, but once you get in areas with several floors, I realized, no, this isn't me. Somebody at Remedy did this to me. Look at what I'm looking at right now. Okay, see my red arrow on the map? Naturally, I assume that I need to be going to the right, right? But guess what? There's nothing there. All of these floors interlock on top of each other and it makes it so stupid. And like right now, see again, look at my red arrow. I go up here because I'm like, oh, look, there's a hallway right there. I'll do that. But guess what? That's on a different floor from this one. Shut up, Langston. Just moving from point A to point B made me feel like The weekend performing at the Super Bowl. So about three or four hours in, the narrative isn't really going anywhere. Navigating the map's about as fun as sawing your head off with a toothbrush. I saved, I put the game down, and I didn't touch it again for over three years. But then, oh then, at the tail end of 2023, a new player hit the scene. Alan Wake 2. That game that's universally loved by absolutely everyone and hated by absolutely no one. You suck, you jackass. Why don't you shut the hell up? <laughs> well, playing that game made me realize just how connected the Remedy Pie is, and so far I like the Remedy Pie. But did I really want to try Control for a third time? As fate would have it, I wanted to try out streaming, so I put out a community poll asking what the people wanted to see. I went ahead and threw control in there, cause why not, and sure enough, it won. By the way, as promised, now that I've beaten control, no more live streams on this channel for the foreseeable future. Instead, I'm gonna be streaming and posting on my second channel, and there's a link for that in the description. The algorithm hates when I stream, community feedback said, I can't watch anymore. And my very first live stream donation was someone bribing me with $5 to stop streaming from this channel. Thank you? Anywho, I start streaming Control, and now I'm committed. I'm gonna finish this thing this time. And now that I have finished the entire thing and its DLC, I have some thoughts. I go into Remedy games looking for story, and honestly, from start to finish in Control, there's just not a lot of that to go around. Don't get me wrong, I could make you guys an hour-long video going over all the world-building stuff and all the lore that takes place in this game. Like covering the entity from outer space that speaks broken English. Oh, is the guy who can't talk right? Why are you locked up in here? Uh, casual turning. And <laughs> Gerbil took the top head. What do you want? The head. The head for tails. What did he say? That monster that comes out of the fridge to eat you if you look away from it. If, if I look away, I don't know what this thing will do. My eyes hurt so much. Just hang on, Philip. But as for the main plot of the game and what happens in the main narrative in this 15 or so hour playthrough, I could explain in about 10 seconds. Imagine you're watching the Harry Potter movies. It'd be like if the first movie were nothing but a fat exposition dump. The next six movies are Harry just kind of roaming around the halls of Hogwarts, all the while fighting off some Death Eaters that pop up every now and again. Death Eaters whose motivations we don't know, by the way, because in this version of Harry Potter, the bad guys have no leader that we are aware of. Then you get to the final movie, and Voldemort is actually introduced. He faces off with Voldemort, but then Voldy just kind of slinks off, and the movie's like, Well, we'll get him eventually. Stay tuned for the sequel, though, bruv. All that to say, I came here for story, and I was not pleased with it, narratively speaking. However, the world of control is vast, and the combat is so, so fun and unique. I think I had my expectations too high for what the ashtray maze would be, if I'm being honest. It ended up being shorter than I'd hoped, but I will never say no to another segment where you get to jam out to the old gods of Asgard. I'd love some health, though. No, is it over? Big sad. Control's a combat power fantasy, first and foremost. Only problem with that, though, is right about the midpoint of the game and beyond, almost every enemy you come across has counters to your powers. And they just dodge everything. I forget to use the shield. I need to use that more. Especially as these guys are all, uh, getting up in my face. Oh! 
Whoa! <laughs> like, I hated in Arkham Knight... Look, I hated in Arkham Knight when it got to the point in the campaign where every enemy you fight, you had to use one specific type of attack on them. But playing Control made me think I might have been a little too harsh on that system. Because in Control, they're all resistant to all of your moves. You like force launching a fire extinguisher at 100 miles per hour at someone's head? You can do that in this game. But no matter which enemy it is, there's about a 50-50 shot they're just gonna dodge it and you'll have to resort to the old shooty-shooty, which they will likely also dodge. I am a little notorious for being a little too harsh on games that I actually like, and Control is no exception. Do I want to play it again? No, not really. Did I enjoy my time playing it now that I finally got to the end? Yeah. Yeah, I did. The game is extremely unique, and it reminded me of just how player-friendly Remedy Entertainment still is to this day. I mean, they're still releasing DLCs for games that are like 15 or 20 bucks a piece, and they contain several hours of gameplay each. I mean, Call of Duty's King Kong glove takes $80 to unlock. You do the math. The Secrets of the Oldest House, power blasting my way through interdimensional monsters, and stopping to smell the roses in this game with huge emphasis on world building and detail made me glad I finally took the time to see it through. And yes, Remedy, your sequel bait worked. I will in fact be playing Control 2 when it comes out. Please leave Sweet Baby out of your game this time though, for all of our sakes. Speaking of games that I love, while still sounding pretty harsh about them, here's my review of Helldivers 2's live service so far. As for Control, have you played it? Did you like it? Did you finish it? Let me know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching. Kingered out.